Hey, Dr. Astar Bear. This video is about the supply side of the market. All right, so the foundations of supply. Again, this material comes from Alfred Marshall, just as the material on demand, the modern supply and demand graphs come from Marshall. And Marshall took a very similar uh, line of argumentation when he's talking about the supply curve. So Marshall argued that the supply curve comes out of a relationship between two variables, okay? The, the price, P, and the quantity supplied, okay? Quantity supplied, Q superscript S, that is the amount that the sellers are willing and able to sell at a given price. The amount that sellers are willing and able to sell at a given price. So there is a thing called a supply function, says Marshall, and a supply function just simply says the quantity supplied is a mathematical function of price. Okay, quantity supplied equals F parentheses P. And it says, okay, there is a mathematical function which tells us exactly, okay, at, a, at each given level of the price, what is the quantity that the suppliers are willing and able to sell, right? And again, this is the general format of this function. It doesn't tell us exactly what the relationship is. It just says these are the variables, right? This is the independent variable. That's the dependent variable. So if we wanted to know exactly, like, what is the specific function, well, there's going to be a different one for every market. So again, Marshall's trying to say something in general, something that's going to apply to every market. And the thing that he says is there's a law of supply. That if we look at this function, if we were to take the derivative of this function, we would find that's positive. That means there is a direct relationship between the price and the quantity supplied, right? That is, if the price goes up, the quantity supplied is going to go up and vice versa. The price goes down quantity supplied is also going to go down. That is the law of supply according to Marshall. All right. Now, why does this hold? Why is this true? Marshall basically put this all down to competition and an assumption about firms. Okay. So we assume that all firms seek to maximize their profits. All right, so in other words, if a firm could do something different, which would result in a higher profit, they would do that, right? If, they, if they're if they given a choice between two different markets, one of them, they have, let's say, the same amount of risk, the same amount of cost, but one has higher profit than the other, they're going to choose that market, right? That's the assumption here, okay? So we have, uh, Marshall argued, number one, we have an expansion effect that occurs, okay? As the price increases, firms are going to enter that market. They're going to enter the market. They are drawn by this. And the reason that they are drawn by it is because as the price goes up, we assume that the profit rate also goes up. Right? Price goes up, the profit rate goes up. So very important assumption. Uh, goes back to Ricardo. It has a long history, actually, in terms of the history of economic thought. All right, expansion effect. Prices increase, new firms enter the market, and that is the reason why the quantity supplied increases as the price increases. All right, number two is the substitution effect for firms. Okay, so individuals, buyers also have a substitution effect. This one is different. This one says, as the price goes up, because that, again, because that increases the profit rate of producing that particular good, firms that are already in the market, firms in the market will shift their production toward that particular good. Okay, so they will perform a substitution within their market same basic reasoning as what we argued here with the expansion effect. This one is just uh, firms are not entering the market. They're already in the market. 
Okay, so example here would be, let's say we have two goods, which are substitutes from the perspective of the producer. Okay, let's say we have gasoline and kerosene. These are substitutes from a production standpoint because both of them, of course, are produced out of crude oil. Okay, these are they're refined uh, petroleum products. They're made from crude petroleum. So suppliers can, can choose which of these they like to produce. If they have a refinery, uh, they can choose, right? And they're going to choose based on the balance of prices and, of course, the overall level of demand, right? There's a lot more demand for gasoline than there is for kerosene. Gasoline is what you put in your car. Kerosene is what you put in, I don't know, a lamp or something like that, right? A go camping uh, kerosene lamp, right? So, but the point of this is, right, if the price of the kerosene was to rise, then more crude oil would be made into kerosene and less into gasoline, maybe a little bit less, right? But, all right, expansion effect, substitution effect. This gives us a supply curve, which is upward sloping. All right, so we're going to put the price on the vertical axis, and we're going to put the quantity supplied on the horizontal axis. And we get an upward sloping relationship here between price and quantity supplied. So if we're talking about, let's say, something like t-shirts, then the price, number of dollars per shirt, and quantity supply would be the number of shirts. All right, so let's say t-shirts are $5. How many will be produced? Well, let's say it's 50,000, right? Versus if it's $10, how many shirts will be produced? Let's say it's 80,000 and so forth, okay? So we've got identified two different points along this supply curve. And of course, there's many more, right? Because a curve has an infinite number of different points along it, right? What we're saying here is this comes out of a mathematical function, that's the supply function, and it gives us for any given price, what is the quantity supplied, okay? So a change in the price causes a movement along the supply curve, all right? So for example, from A to B, we have moved along that supply curve. But that's not the only thing that can happen here, right? That the, the willingness of suppliers to produce can change, all right? If it changes, suppliers are more or less willing to supply at that price than they were before. So let's say that this happens, right? Let's say that at price of $10, say that remains constant, right? But what happens is that suppliers are, initially they're willing to, to supply 80,000, but perhaps that changes, right? Perhaps they are now only willing to supply at that price of, okay, we're at a new point, point C. They're now only willing to supply 60,000. What has changed, all right? Well, maybe it, what's changed is there's been a change in the price of the inputs, the things that go into producing shirts. Like example, uh, shirts, let's say the shirts are made out of cotton, right? So the, the price of cotton has increased and that makes the shirts more expensive to produce. They're, they're less willing to supply them at any given level, right? So, if this has happened, if there's been a change in the price of inputs, we are going to have a new supply curve. Okay? We're going to shift from S1 to S2. And this is a different, a different supply curve. Suppliers are less willing to produce. Okay, What's happened here is there's been a shift in a supply. All right. And these shifts in supply are caused by something other than a price change, right? A price change causes a movement along. It doesn't cause a shift. What causes a shift is the price is the same, but the suppliers are different. They're not as willing to supply as they were before. 
Okay, so one thing that can cause that is a change in input prices. There's lots of different input prices, uh, wages, energy prices. You know that it depends on each business is different, right? What are what are the inputs that they use? All right. The the second thing would be a change in technology, and by that we mean a change in productivity. Okay, the how much can be produced per unit of the input. Let's say that the technology increases and we shift to a different supply curve, S3, right? And again, think about it this way, okay? Right to left. Right is an increase in supply and left is a decrease in supply. That way you won't get confused. Sometimes with a supply curve, you can get confused and think, this curve is like above this one, right? Oh, this one's higher, and so it's been an increase. That's wrong, right? It's it's a decrease. Think about it horizontally, and you'll see that, right? At a given price, ten dollars, are firms more willing to produce, right? The quantity has gone up, or less willing to produce. Okay, so shifts in supply. Okay, price change, change in technology. Uh, it could be simply a change in the number of firms or the number of suppliers, right? If there's more firms, then there's more being produced at that same price, okay? Could be a change in the price of goods that are related, all right? So back to our earlier example here about gasoline and kerosene, right? These are related goods. so. One of them changes, it shifts the supply curve of the other one because firms are shifting into that kind of production. Okay, so number four, change in the price of related goods. And finally, it could be a change in the expectations of firms. All right, so expectations is a highly psychological kind of explanation, right? This is about people's view of the future. And Keynes in particular put a lot of emphasis on this, okay? So Keynes argued that expectations are one of these things that there's no way it can really be rational, right? We, none of us knows what's going to happen in the future. We form expectations. These expectations can change very rapidly. Or they might be right or they might be wrong, but the point is they can change quickly, okay? And of course, the example that Keynes used was the 1929 uh, stock market crash that affected all kinds of businesses' expectations, right? What, what they thought before the crash, they thought, okay, this is a good plan. We're going to invest in this factory. After the crash, they said, no, 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 no. Forget that. Don't do it. Because our view of the future has now changed. We see the future as a lot less rosy than we did before the stock market crash. Okay, so that's my coverage of the supply curve. Thank you very much.